What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video, I've got another very important AMC update to bring all of you this afternoon. So what we're going to be covering in this update is a brief analysis on the Ortex short interest and utilization numbers to give us a better understanding of where we are at at the current time in terms of the short squeeze side of this investment. From there, we're going to move on into a couple of key bombshells and really important events and catalysts that AMC has coming up. Now, all of these events and catalysts are incredibly bullish for AMC as a company, and this is going to bring a lot more eyes to them, which I believe is going to be a very good sign. Now, in addition to this, we're going to be starting to cover the institutional ownership changes in AMC. We are starting to see the 13F filings start to come out from Q3, and that is going to give us some insight into what the big money has done with their AMC positions over the last quarter. Now, you guys know how uh, and where I stand on what the institutions have been doing in in my opinion, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense for these institutions to have decreased their position in AMC if they were buying all the way up to 77 and back down to the $50 range. That would mean that they see upside past that $77 mark. So I would expect to see some increases in institutional ownership in the key institutions that we are going to be looking for, BlackRock, Vanguard, and the most successful hedge fund of all time, Renaissance Technologies. And then the last thing that we're going to be going over is this debt ceiling situation and how it is going to affect us as AMC shareholders and the broad market. Right now, it looks like they're about to figure it out, and we are going to get some blue and clear skies ahead in terms of the runway for where we could take off in the near future. So before we get into all of that information, if you enjoyed the information and analysis that I provide for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And the YouTube algorithm has been kind of wonky recently. Um, we've seen a lot of our videos getting shown, but they're from months ago. So if you guys don't mind, it doesn't have to be on my videos. You can do it on your favorite AMC creator. Make sure you guys are engaging with the creators that you like. So right at the current time, AMC is trading at $37.69. Now, I really want you guys to think about the big picture of this play right now. Over the last three to four months, I cannot think of one bad piece of news that has come out of AMC. There's been nothing. So when we think about where we're at in terms of the price and where we are at in terms of the short squeeze play that we are going to go over, it would not surprise me at all that a couple of these institutions that have very much over leveraged themselves on AMC are desperately trying to keep this price down before we end up seeing the fireworks and we see this price skyrocket to the upside once again. So when we come over to this Ortex update right here, utilization is climbing up a little bit, which is a very good sign. This could start to put pressure on these lending institutions. So we see 88.04% up from about that 85% range yesterday. Now, estimated short interest as a percentage of the free flow, still very high, but not at those all-time high ranges that we saw yesterday at 20.76%. And remember, this is something that we need to keep in mind. The estimated short interest right before we saw that big run-up in June was about 16.59%. And we are now trading at much higher prices with a lot higher short interest. So the next time we see a big run-up, most likely it is going to be a lot more aggressive. Now, when we come over to this news article right here, no time to die outpacing advanced ticket sales of Venom, let there be carnage. So what we're seeing is the new James Bond movie is currently outpacing Venom, which recently set a record. This has kind of been a theme that we've been seeing on AMC over the last couple of months box office record after record after record. And on Labor Day, they actually set an all-time record for the amount of revenue that the company was able to bring in. Now, when we come over to here, this is really the big bombshell that I think a lot of people are underestimating. Now, a big weekend coming for AMC theaters. On Saturday, October 9th, AMC features the new fabulous James Bond movie, the second weekend of Venom. And here is the big one right here. The Wilder Fury heavyweight boxing match live from Vegas and the Metropolitan Opera live from New York City. So this fight right now is going to draw a lot of attention. I believe that this could draw a similar amount of attention to the McGregor-Poirier fight that 
all of us were really interested in, and that is the reason why AMC is continuing to show these events in their theaters. This is very, very good fundamentally for the company, and I know a lot of people right now are going to say the fundamentals do not matter in terms of this short squeeze play, and I would say that is the furthest from the truth. Now, you have to think about the long thesis and the short thesis for AMC. Why would the shorts really overload on their positions on AMC? Well, the fundamentals of the company. They saw that the fundamentals were weak at the time that they were entering these positions, and they just decided to pile in. Now, a lot of these shorts have been continuously trying to pile in, and really, honestly, it looks like they have not been keeping up with all of the information that has been coming out. As I said earlier in the video, I can't think of one bad piece of news that AMC has come out with over the last three to five months months. So what we're seeing is that not only are the fundamentals getting better for AMC as a company, but previously to the pandemic, we are now seeing AMC a trading at around what it should be fundamentally valued at with much higher short interest. So the company should be valued a lot higher right now, but the shorts are continuously trying to keep it down. So the fundamentals matter a lot in this situation. And as I always say, it's much better to have good fundamental news versus bad fundamental news, especially when the main reason the shorts are entering into this trade is based on fundamentals. We are continuously proving them wrong every single day. Now, when we come over here, we also see AMC is now accepting Dogecoin, Bitcoin, Litecoin, and I believe Ethereum, and they've started to roll this out through the ability to purchase uh, essentially gift cards at the theaters. Very good step in the, uh, in the right direction, in my opinion. Now, coming over here, this is another thing that really is super important that we've touched on in the past. We were able to buy back at par 35 million of AMC theaters' most expense, ex expensive debt. Sorry about that. Uh, with 15% interest rate. We've gone over this uh, before. But it just shows us every single time that the shorts are just so wrong. Now, here is where we are going to see this reflected. I know a lot of people have been saying every single time we get good news for AMC, the stock price drops. We see box office numbers increase, and then we see the share price drop. We see great news coming from Adam Aaron at AMC, and then the share price goes to the downside. Well, there's an event coming up that the shorts in the market is really not going to be able to hide from. AMC's earnings date is going to be around November 1st. Now, this is just the estimated date. We are going to get an announcement directly from AMC as to when this date is actually going to be. But with the performance of AMC in Q2, we had Black Widow and a couple of other movies that were absolutely awesome awesome in terms of revenue. We had the McGregor Poirier fight. We are going to get a lot more information into how AMC is doing as a company. And in my opinion, they have the potential to absolutely blow these numbers out of the water. Now, moving over to Fintel to track some of the institutional ownership changes right now, we're not really getting anything crazy. We started to see these 13 Fs come in on October 5th. We've seen a couple of companies report, but nothing too substantial. So we're going to be waiting and watching on all of these different numbers. And again, BlackRock, Vanguard, and Renaissance are going to be the key institutions that we need to watch for. And these numbers are going to come out over the next month. So if you guys have access to any of this information, I would keep a lookout for this because this is going to give us a really good understanding of what the institutions are doing with their money and what their conviction levels are like on this AMC short squeeze play. Now, when we come over to this article right here, this has to do with the global economic events that we've been talking about on this channel for many, many months. Default averted for now after Senate reportedly reaches debt ceiling deal. Now, this hasn't really been voted on yet, but most likely they are going to figure this situation out. Now, the good thing about them getting this done right now, about 11 to 10 days before this October 18th debt ceiling deadline, is that they're lowering the risk that the United States gets their credit rating downgrade. That is very, very good for the overall markets in the short term. If they were to wait till this last second, even if they were to kick the debt ceiling can down the road, we could still see these big ratings agencies come out and downgrade the United States credit, and that would send our markets going to the downside. And at the current time with where we are at with AMC, 
we would see a lot of selling pressure if that were to happen. We would follow the market. I know a lot of people like to talk about the negative beta aspect of AMC, but again, that is a very lagging indicator and it just shows a correlation over a specific time frame, and it does not guarantee any future price action. So with this news coming out right now, this is very, very good in the short term for my, uh, in my opinion. And again, kicking this debt ceiling can down the road, it's not really good for our country, but it is good in the short term for our market. So that is mainly going to wrap up this update on AMC. If you guys enjoyed the information and analysis that I provided for you in this video, make sure you go down and hit that like button. It costs you nothing to do it, but it really helps us out a whole lot in getting this information out to as many people who want to learn. And if you guys want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you're notified every time I post a new video so you get to stay up to date on all of your favorite stocks, learn about a couple of new ones, and see exactly which options I am trading and which strategies I am using to trade them. So I hope you guys are having a great green day and I'll see you guys in the next video.